So the other day I was in the middle of shooting some products for an Etsy seller and I kind of had the idea to just film some of it because I think there's a lot of useful stuff that happens on a real shoot that in the mock shoots that I've shown before they maybe don't come across, maybe I forget about them. I'm not usually thinking about things like streamlining the process. So with, with Etsy sellers you tend to charge less money than you would for a big corporate shoot because the reach is smaller. Just the amount of money that you can charge is, is reduced and it's not a slight on any one seller on Etsy, it's just the way the market forces drive you. That's, that's the best way to explain it. Long story short, you have to streamline the process to get the most work done in the smallest amount of time and with the least amount of effort, basically. I'm gonna take you through a product shoot for an artist based around Manchester and I'm just gonna show you how I shot one or two of the things. So that's this episode of When Will I Learn? Let's get into it. So I've put all the footage on the computer from this shoot and whatever I've done, I've fucked it up. So I still want to make a video about this because it's a really interesting topic, but I don't want to show you this shit footage that you're not even going to be able to hear what I'm saying. I mean, I filmed a great intro. What do I do? So last night I was stressing about things going wrong. So what I'm going to do today is go on a bit of a day trip to Leeds. Sometimes it's best to kind of forget and just leave the stuff, leave the problem at home, go somewhere else, do something really different and then come back to it with fresh eyes. So let's go. So the footage messed up yesterday, but I still want to use it. I don't want to reshoot it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut together some bits, just do a voiceover on it and maybe point to some stuff with graphics instead of pointing stuff in person. Hopefully that'll make for a more interesting video than if I just try and, and use what I've got. So I don't know about you lot, but when I find something gets tough or I find that editing is starting to get to me, I like to kind of come outside and just like separate myself as much as possible from it. This is not a bad place. Come out on a little trip to Yorkshire, which is where I used to live a long time ago now. So in terms of doing a product shoot, what what I really need to do for these kind of shoots, I've already said it kind of, but I need to streamline the process, make it repeatable and efficient. And I'm gonna go into some of the ways that I do that, how that I set up lights to make that possible, how I tether to the computer from the camera to make that possible all really straightforward, simple, and yeah, how, I, how that works with Lightroom, how it works with Sony's kind of remote camera thing. So uh, yeah. So the first thing I'll do is I'll get everything set up. This just involves setting up the lights. I use like a crossbar. In fact, let me show you. So let's break this setup down. What have I got? I've got one light stand with a flash speed light on top. Then I've got another with some diffusion, which is just an Amazon shower curtain, which is like a three pound investment that you won't regret. Then I've got two more light stands. They've both got super clamps on top, which are supporting a crossbar. Then I've got my folding table, which is gonna be the platform for all of this. On one side, I've got some foam core, that crossbar is supporting a softbox with a speed light in there. Behind that is one of my backdrops. Obviously the product is on the table, everything's laid out there. All you need now is the camera on the tripod. 
got one flash set at quarter power, one flash set at one sixteenth power, and there you have it. Hold on a second, I've not said why I'm setting it up like this. The idea behind setting it up like this is I want a bright image, nice and airy, plenty of detail across the whole of the shot. Putting the light off to the left will give me a little bit of directionality to the, to the light. It'll add a bit of contrast to the image. If that contrast gets a little bit too much, that's why I've got bounce, which is the foam core to the right of the image. I guess the next thing is the backdrops and the surfaces, the things that you put the products on and the things that are in the background that create a bit of interest, a bit of separation, that kind of stuff. I'm just using the backdrops that I've done in previous videos. I'll link those videos down below so you can check them out. We of course cannot forget product styling, so this is like where you put the product, how you stand it up, stuff like that, where it goes, making sure it's repeatable. Once you've got the lighting setup done and you've got your backgrounds in place, the styling is as simple for this shot as something to prop the coasters up, moving the camera around to get the best composition, and in terms of repeatability, I use a little ruler just to measure stuff out. So sort of a big deal, but kind of not, is the camera and the lens. You can kind of, you can get away with using anything. I'll show you what I use though. In terms of camera equipment, I've got the Sony a7R. The lens is a 60mm macro, that's a Nikon one, so it's adapted onto the Sony. I've got a tripod with a ball head on it. I've got the cable to tether it to the computer. I've got two speed lights. There's two pocket wizards. I've got a couple of batteries on hand. And then the last thing that will make or break your shoot, the thing that will speed you up or slow you down, the thing that you've got to get dialed in, is a workflow. The workflow for tethering can get quite complicated. Different brands have different proprietary software. I'm using Sony, their app's called Remote. That lets you change settings and you can fire the shutter from there. Once you've done that, you can set Lightroom to automatically drag in those photos and apply your own preset. This significantly reduces the steps in your workflow, meaning it's quicker and more efficient. Funny thing is, messing this video up has actually turned into a much better video. Maybe I should do another video on that. Maybe this video has gone on too long and I should just stop rambling.